And here we have the Thermot reaction that I do with the steel spheres. And I am showing you the redox reaction that goes on here. And we're going to start to write some half reactions. Now, half reactions are reactions where we're going to split the reaction in half. Redox, as we've already learned, is about reduction, the gaining of electrons, and oxidation, the loss of electrons. Then it would make sense that I could actually split the chemicals that gain electrons and lose electrons into their respective half reactions to show the gaining and loss of electrons. You don't see electrons written in these reactions, in redox reactions, because they cancel out. The electrons that are absorbed uh, are equal to electrons that are released, so they cancel. But we're going to try to show them in our half reactions. So this is our second in, uh, important skill, or skill number two in redox, that you ha that is an absolute must to continue. So let's assign oxidation numbers first. We're going to use our first skill that we learned to see how, in, how did these uh, uh, chemicals actually change their oxidation states. We have to identify who oxidized and who reduced. That's part of what we're doing here. So I know that the standalone elements get that zero. I put up there. And you know, one quick way to identify redox reactions is to find a zero. You've got a zero in an element. Uh, if, you see, if you see a standalone element, which is what I use in my class to, to, to identify an element that has a zero charge because the protons equal electrons, and you have a redox reaction because it's a zero here, it's not a zero when it's a compound. So that means those oxidation numbers are changing and electrons are being lost or, and or gained. So let's assign oxidation numbers so we can see who is losing electrons, who's gaining. All right, oxygen, as we've done before, is negative 2, negative 6 overall. Okay, this has to be plus 6 overall to equal 0. We're using the bottom numbers to find the top. Because there's two irons, it's plus 3 individually. Okay, over here, oxygen is negative 2, negative 6 overall. Okay, plus 6 overall equals 0, and aluminum is plus 3 individually. Now, I could have cheated. Aluminum only becomes plus 3, but we just made sure that the formula was right. And we only really care about the top numbers. I used the overall numbers to get the top. Okay, let's start writing some half reactions. Okay, let's pull out the aluminum. On the reactant side, we have an aluminum. Okay, on the product side, we have... Uh, aluminum plus 3. Now we're doing simple redox reactions here. Okay, so for those looking for the freshman level balancing and uh, redox uh, half reaction writing, that would be another AP lesson I have. We're going to stick with the very simple form to begin with. And then later on this course, if you keep tuned, I will have one. Any case, so aluminum goes aluminum plus 3, but how did that happen? How does a zero become a plus three? Well, I can't change proton numbers because the chemical symbol is staying the same. So obviously this lost some electrons. And that number, of course, would be three electrons. Okay, and this is the oxidation half reaction. How do I know it's oxidation? Well, first of all, I see a metal losing electrons, which makes a lot of sense. And loss of electrons is our oxidation. Okay. So, or I can see that the number, the charge of the oxidation state is increasing, which means you lose. Also, the what? Electrons in the product side. You're releasing them, just like if you release heat and you have heat on the product side. Okay, next one. Who else is changing? Well, look at this. Iron plus two. I'm sorry, iron plus three is going to iron zero. And how does a plus 3 become a 0? Well, it must have, what? Gained electrons, right. And how many? 3. And I like to write my electrons as 3, negative e. It's a designation that most people use. Okay, so 3e negative 1 means that negative 3 plus a plus 3 gives me 0. Now, your check to make sure your half reactions are correct are, is that the... Um, you should have the same charge on both sides of a half reaction. They won't always be 0 and 0, like in this case. 0 on this side, plus 3 and a negative 3 is 0. So they won't always be 0 and 0, and they won't always be the same charge. And then when you balance a reaction, you have to make sure that the electrons themselves are balanced, okay? In any case, 
these are the two half reactions. This one, of course, being the one that happened in reduction. All right, this is the reduction half reaction. Why? We're gaining electrons and the charge is going down. So this is how you write a half reaction. Okay, this uh, oxidation state, I'll ST, is going up because of a loss of electron. This oxidation state is going down because we gained electrons or our charge got reduced. That's why they call it reduction. So anytime you've got electrons on the product side, you're releasing them, oxidation. And anytime you uh, see electrons on the reactant side, you're absorbing them, just kind of like endo and exo. Okay. So this is the reduction half reaction. This is the oxidation half reaction. Now, there's some other things we can pull from these half reactions. Uh, before we get going here, let's look at something in the reaction that neither got reduced nor oxidized. Look at the oxygen here. The oxygen stayed negative 2. So if I was to ask you what happened to the oxygen in this reaction, you'd say it neither got oxidized nor reduced in this redox reaction which, by the way, is a classic single replacement. If you notice, okay, the aluminum okay, replaces the iron. Okay, So the aluminum replaces the iron here to make aluminum oxide and freeze out the iron. So if you think with me, iron sticks with the oxygen because it has, what, a positive charge that attracts the negative. But if, if an iron was to accept three electrons from the aluminum, right, this is giving off three electrons, right, Right, it's giving off three electrons. The iron plus two accepts them, right, and becomes zero. Well, once it becomes zero charged, it no longer attracts the oxygen and it moves forward. But the aluminum, by giving off three, is now aluminum plus three, and now it's attracted to the oxygen. So you can think with me, it's pretty logical how this happens. Okay. Any case, there's four questions I want to ask you now. Okay. First, I'm going to ask you number one. Who got oxidized? Who got oxidized? And you would say, well, the chemical that actually lost the electron. Okay, if you're having trouble with this, we have Leo the lion says Ger. So losing electrons is oxidation. So who lost the electrons? Specifically, the aluminum zero. You have to be specific. Don't write aluminum. By the way, by writing aluminum, you are talking about the metal that I had on the steel sphere. Okay, the iron plus three was on the rust. Okay, and of course I made um, pure iron was actually made, and aluminum oxide, uh, the metal uh, aluminum rust was made. But in any case, you have to make sure you're very specific in your answers here. Okay, so if you meant to say aluminum plus three and you write aluminum, that would imply the metal standing alone, and that'd be wrong. So you have to be explicit in your answer with a charge. Now, if you left this as aluminum, same thing. Okay. Now, the second question, which is probably easy, is who got reduced? Well, this is the subject or the chemical species that had its oxidation number go down. And specifically, it's iron plus three. Don't say iron. If you say iron, you're implying this chemical. And that's not the chemical or the species that actually accepted the electrons. It was the iron plus three. Notice something. The answers to these two questions, okay, the answers to these questions are always on this side. Why? Because redox is not an equilibrium reaction. It's a one-way completion reaction. It keeps going. Okay, it's a forward direction if it's working at all. Okay, it has nothing to do with the reverse. So we want to know who, in fact, did the passing along of electrons. We don't care what the result is, and we do, obviously, because we saw an exothermic reaction, but in a redox reaction, we're looking at them, we care about who was actually passing the stuff around. Okay, think about this guy as the giver, and this is the taker, and this is what happens afterwards, okay? So these four questions always on the reactant side, all right? Number three, this is new, okay? This is the one that is the oxidizing agent. Yes, you heard that right, oxidizing agent, okay? The oxidizing agent. Now, the oxidizing agent 
is the one that helps things oxidize. If I was a modeling agent, you should run. But no, if I'm an oxidizing agent, okay, I'm helping something oxidize. So I'm going to help something get oxidized. If you look carefully with me, right, who helped who get oxidized? Who helped who get oxidized? Iron pulled three electrons away from the aluminum. Now, some people say, well, didn't the aluminum give its electrons? Not sure how it actually occurred, but the iron plus three, okay, helped aluminum get oxidized by taking them. So by iron getting reduced and pulling these three electrons away, aluminum got oxidized. So what I always teach, when you hear the word agent, you think opposite. Say with me, opposite. You didn't say with me, say with me. Opposite. No, you didn't say it with me. Better. Say it loud and proud. Opposite. Yes. When you hear agent, you think opposite. So oxidizing agent. Oh, think opposite. That's the one who got reduced. So the oxidizing agent is the one who gets reduced, right? It got reduced by drawing in, okay, electrons from the aluminum. It pulled the electrons. Okay, and of course we have the reducing agent. Now, by the way, oxidizing agent can also be called oxidizer. You'll hear those words, so careful with the vocabulary. Reducing agent. Okay, well, this is the chemical that helps something gets reduced. Well, didn't aluminum help iron get reduced by giving its electrons? Again, I don't know who gave who. It could be a combination that both were adding to the overall spontaneity of this reaction by both contributing. They both could be pushing and giving, or one could be. We'll talk about those differences, okay, later in the week. But right now, the reducing agent here is the one. Oh, agent, think what? Think opposite. So it's the one who got oxidized. So aluminum got oxidized by helping others get reduced. So the aluminum is your reducing agent because it, okay, forced its electrons onto the iron plus three and it got reduced. So it was the agent that helped it occur. All right. And that's what we're doing here. And that's essentially what you're going to do for the first, okay, four reactions on that worksheet preceding. So please continue with this worksheet and do the first side, doing the half reactions, and tell me who got reduced, oxidized, who are the agents. Remember to think opposite. See you later.